If you go to a show and you keep on getting beat on condition, beat on condition, beat on condition, something's wrong, isn't it? You bet. So how do I solve that problem? My name is Scott Williamson. I'm a professor for California State University, Fresno, and I teach courses in animal nutrition, swine production, both beginning and advanced, environmental management, and uh, genetics. Well, I got my BS at Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana, and I got my master's and PhD at the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. I've been raising rabbits, let's see, 55 years this year. To me, in condition means tight flesh, solid body, well filled, not rough at all, and fur appropriate for the standard. So if it's a flyback fur, that fur's got to fly back. It can't stand up. There can't be any holes in the coat. The coat's got to be of uh, uniform length in terms of the guard hairs. If it doesn't have guard hairs, the guard hairs are the same length as the undercoat, everybody's got to be the same length. So that's in condition to me. You heard the judge say beaten on fur. Beaten on condition. You tell me, is it important? You can have the best marked Dutch up there, but if it's in a mold, it's not going to be best to breed. And it doesn't have a prayer to be best in show. And it doesn't matter what breed it is. You know, Dutch has quite a few points on markings, like how some other marked breeds do. But if they're not in condition, they don't have a prayer. And it'd be challenged to get a best to breed if they weren't in condition. Is condition environmental or genetic? And uh, Alan knows the answer to this question because he sat in both those classes at Fresno State. And you can't have one without the other because it's genetics plus the environment equals animal performance or what you see in front of you. So you got to start with a genetic package first that's able to be conditioned. And that's the first thing that anybody that raises meat pen rabbits should be looking for is tight flesh. You know, we use the term in the sheep industry in old terms like onion skin, where you can't even grab a hold of them, they're so tight and the, uh, the pelt was really thin. Uh, they probably use new terms now, but that was a term back then. And that's, a, that's something that you can keep in mind when you're trying to breed. Meat pens are going to be real competitive because you want to be able to feel the meat. Uh, and there's not much fat on a rabbit if you've ever harvested one. So when we talk about condition, we're not talking about fat. We're talking about the condition of flesh. But condition, when you feel a rabbit, this rabbit really feels good. That ought to be going through your head. This rabbit really feels good. You should not feel a rabbit and go, ooh. Ooh, you know, going through your head like that because it's a little bony, a little rough, a little flat. You know, the skeleton's designed just to hold the muscles in place, not to be exposed. And if the muscle's in full bloom, I call it full bloom where those muscle fibers themselves are engorged with water, you're going to get a solid rabbit that is in good condition where it feels good and it's going to do quite well on a show tape. As an ARBA judge, and I've judged several shows for several years, Rabbits that are in condition have a better chance because they feel better. Not just fur, a lot of people get confused that condition is just fur condition. Condition, to me, as it's defined in AARBA standard of perfection, is the condition of the body, which means tight flesh, good muscling, well-filled muscle fiber, so you can feel a solid animal underneath that pelt and underneath all that fur. So, if you want to be competitive, you've got to have good condition, it's plain and simple. Environment is supplementary to genetics. And what environment permits the genes to do is maximize their performance if they're present. The, the problem we have with rabbits is they're not a high dollar item. So we don't have good mapping of the genome of a rabbit. Uh, they might have it for uh, biological reasons, but not for show reasons. You know, we'd all like to find out what the snippet is that controls certain things in rabbits so we could either eliminate it or change it or test to see if our animals have it. And uh, we don't have that luxury in rabbits, unfortunately, so we got to do it by test crossing or back crossing or uh, evaluate our progeny that we get out of specific cross. If you go to a show and you keep on getting beat on condition, beat on condition, beat on condition, something's wrong, isn't it? You bet. So how do I solve that problem? Well, the first thing you got to do is look at the ones that are beating you. How can you win if you don't know what's beating you? So look at those first. Do your rabbits measure up to those? Feel them. You know, I, I start with junior exhibitors and say, this is how you learn. And I'll say the same thing to adult breeders. They don't pay enough, close enough attention to the rabbits that beat them. We don't like to get beat. Nobody likes to get beat. Somebody tells you I don't mind getting beat, they're lying. They don't like getting beat. Some don't like it more than others, though. 
But, but that's the spirit. That's the spirit that we have too in, in the competition because we want to make the best product. You know, because that best in show wanes, you know, that win wanes after a while. But you can be proud of what you did. To have fun doing this, you try to put your best foot forward and that's where the competition comes in. Because then can I condition rabbits better than you? Can I breed rabbits better than you and make them in better condition genetically and then follow that up with uh, nutrients that are going to help them realize their genetic potential? What is a feed supplement? The first thing we have to do is identify a feed that we can depend on. Good luck with that. Because it's difficult. Because these feed mills make different feed besides rabbit feed. If a feed is solely dedicated, I should say, to making rabbit feed like the Couts mill was in Indiana, Heinel, then you've got something there. The ingredients that go into that rabbit feed is just as important as the formulation or the recipe for the rabbit feed because if you have one bad ingredient that can spoil the whole batch. And that's, a, that's the most difficult, challenging thing we have as rabbit breeders is to find a good, solid, dependable feed source. As, as a professional rabbit breeder and shower, I'd rather pay more for the feed of, as long as I knew it was going to be great. You go out and spend more for alfalfa. You go out and spend more for the other ingredients. You make sure it's in there. How many rabbit nutritionists do we have throughout the United States? People that make some money by consulting in, uh, to feed mills that make rabbit feed. Name me one person that does that. No. Because in the feed mill, it's a low priority item. For us, it's a high priority item because that rabbit is what we feed it. You ever hear that uh, old saying, you are what you eat? Same thing with rabbits, they are what they eat. And if they're not getting what they need, they're not gonna be as good as they could be genetically. What is a supplement? It supplements the errors, holes, deficiencies that are in a rabbit pellet or a rabbit feed. Everybody wants to win and supplementing should help you, you know, do better in the show ring. You can, you can mix a rabbit with a supplement like Doc Ra Doc's Rabbit Enhancer. Old Doc, T Dr. Terry Reed came up with this formulation and it's still popular today. It still works today because there's certain things in there. Yucca Shigera and things like that that aren't typically in feed and some feed companies are starting to add that. Dr. Cheek has some recommendations that he has for rabbit feed to make the digestive tract better for rabbits. So when we look at a supplement, we're looking to help improve the dietary intake of that animal to meet the specific needs of the animal to successfully produce the product that we want. The product we want as rabbit exhibitors is a well-conditioned rabbit that's primed not only in its coat, but also its flesh condition and its body condition. And that's where the challenge begins and that's where we have all kinds of formula. One of the master conditioners that's no longer with us anymore was Fibber McGee. And he had, he worked with formulation and you know, everybody was, would follow him around the showroom to see him put that little goodie on top of his feet to try to figure out what it was that he was putting on there. These people that are successful, they have secrets that are guarded. You know, I'm old enough to start sharing some of these secrets because I won't be breeding rabbits forever. But you don't get carried away. Because most people think, well, if this is, they like it this much, let's give them some more. And then pretty soon you got a rabbit that's out of condition because you've blown his coat because you've given it too much energy or too much ice cream in this case, we'll call it. Ice cream. So you gotta be careful how much of your mixed supplement that you get. The nice thing about a supplement is you gotta look at what hair is made from and what this flesh is made of. Every cell in your body has a protein matrix, which means even a fat cell is laid down in a protein matrix. So your body needs to make protein. So people go, it's too hot for protein. I don't buy that for a minute. Unless it's 50% protein, it's not too hot in protein. The rabbit will process it. Any animal will process it. They'll treat it uh, first, like a waste product, they'll get rid of it. Protein's expensive though, so you don't want to do that. And you don't want to, you know, do that to the animal either because it can be hard on their kidneys and liver to process it out or to use it as an energy source. We want to have enough in there and enough of the critical amino acids in there that the animal can assimilate those and make the proteins they need to maintain good flesh condition of both body, hide, and fur. So that's the challenge here. How do we do that? One of the things that has a real good profile of amino acids, sunflower seeds. Everybody knows that's been breeding rabbits for any length of time. And black oil sunflower seeds seem to be better than the uh, giant striped seeds, right? And why is that? Because their profile of amino acids that are presented in those. And you can look up on any table what those amino acids are contained in black oil sunflower seeds. Don't try to de-hull them. 
You know, we like hull of sunflower seeds, right? But rabbits like to eat the whole thing. They'll pop the hull out or they'll take the whole seed in to their mouth and eat it. When we look at a supplement, we're looking for things in that supplement that can help us meet our goals in terms of winning on the show table, making that hard flesh, smooth condition, glass-like finish to their fur, you know, where it almost has a luster to it. It should look alive. I've seen a lot of rabbit coats look dead. Even though they have a flyback, they're dead. They have no life, they have no luster. <laughs> I get a big kick out of this. You can't shampoo a rabbit. Some of these kids in vet 4-H, they want to kill their rabbit up so they give it a bath. And then it looks like, you know, a porcupine almost. Because <laughs> you've taken all the natural oils out of a rabbit. A rabbit has oils in its body that it uses to groom itself. A rabbit's grooming, grooming, grooming all the time. So one of the things we like to put in a supplemental feed is some kind of oil. It can, be, it can be wheat germ oil or any kind of oil because the oil helps the rabbit's goal to uh, keep everything moving through the digestive tract, including hair that it might groom off when it's licking itself. But also if we give it a wheat germ base or another proteinaceous base oil, they're going to pull some of those amino acids out of the oil and use them to manufacture the cells that are necessary to get that hard flesh, that glassy finish to the coat, and that luster. You know, if you look at some people, you look at their hair and it shines almost. And you'd wonder, they have a satin gene? They don't have a satin gene, but it's the, the kind of, it's the nutrition they're on, perhaps. They have a great diet. And uh, I don't know what they use for uh, shampoo products or conditioner, but, you know, if we could do that with rabbits, and of course we can't shampoo them or condition them, we need to make that condition come from the inside. There's a couple examples of pelleted supplements. This is one. I won't mention the brand name, but anytime you pellet something, you, you're bound to destroy something because this is a heating process. But the pellet supplements, again, it's a convenience. You don't have all this stuff rattling around like you have in a, in a, a free supplement that you mixed up yourself and it's not pelleted. But when you pellet something, you're only doing it for convenience. Each one of these pellets should represent a complete package of what you're trying to deliver to the animal. So, when you go from here, being a pelleted product, to a whole grain product, let's call it, presented as is, then you've got to evaluate those grains before you mix them. Don't mix something together that doesn't look right to you. You've got to use some common sense when you're a rabbit breeder, too. You've got to look at it, you've got to smell it, and some people even taste it. But I look and smell, and if it doesn't smell right, if it doesn't look right, I'm not going to feed it. I can't tell you how many times, because you had to buy a certain amount of the product, when I'm mixing up my supplement, I had to throw product out because it had been stored too long. So you got to pay attention to the expiration date, but beyond that, you got to use your senses. That's why God gave you senses. You smell it and look at it. If it doesn't look right or smell right, and unfortunately, God didn't give us the keen sense of smell that rabbits have or that other animals have. And rabbits can smell nasty before we can. And that's why some of them won't eat. If you've got a rabbit you think is a finicky eater, it might be that rabbit can smell better than the other rabbits, which is genetic too, than those other rabbits that are just gobbling stuff down. And that rabbit's in real good condition because they won't eat anything. They eat this supplement because it's fresh. Why do people like farmer's market? It's because it's community activity, yeah, but it's supposed to be fresh produce. And you got to think of produce just like you do livestock. Once you cut the life force off of it, it's going to become necrotic or it's going to start to rot. And that's what produce does. So farmer's markets are popular because it's usually picked that day or the day before. It's presented to the public. It's fresh. The fresher you can get your product, that's why those old boys in England and European countries are pretty <laughs> smart. They go out and harvest their own stuff fresh. takes a little more work give it to their animals, or if you're growing some timothy grass or grass or comfrey or whatever you're growing, you go out and harvest it fresh, give it to the rabbits, they love it because it's fresh and it tastes fresh. There's only a few things you can think of that taste better after it's been warmed up or refrigerated or stays around for a while. You know, pizza's one of them. You can eat cold pizza, it tastes okay, you can accept it. But there's a lot of things you wouldn't eat, like the McDonald's french fry. You're only going to eat that when it's warm. If it gets cold, you'd rather throw it out or eat the box that it came in in the french fries, right? <laughs> Doesn't taste right. Well, do you think rabbits have the same kind of taste buds? You bet they do. Rabbits have taste buds all over their little tongues. And they can use those to 
sense that there's a mold. They use their olfactory nerves in the nose to sense that there's something in there they shouldn't eat. And they've got a key, key to your sense of smell we have. So that's why you're very particular about your products. Supplements also try to help improve the nutritive profile of feeds. And when we pellet feeds, like these two are pelleted, but they're supplements, um, if they got vitamins in it, certain vitamins are what we call thermal labile. They're, they're destroyed by heat. Other vitamins are photolabile. They're destroyed by light. Other light, uh, vitamins are destroyed by long-term storage or stored where it's hot. That's why when you buy vitamins yourself, it says store in a cool, dry, dark place. Why do you think vitamin uh, bottles are colored? They're not clear. They're colored, so light doesn't get into them because UV can damage vitamins also. And you're going to say, ah, what's vitamins anyway? Vitamins, we don't need very many of them, but they're critical for what we call intermediary metabolism. Those, in, those reactions in our body that make a big difference, like making ATP. ATP is energy for the body. And if you don't have enough energy in the body, you could have a sick animal pretty quick or an animal that won't perform like it should. So those are things we should be concerned about because we want to make the best product.